the implications of this story make me uncomfortable. All right, because when I went to Afghanistan to entertain the troops in 2006, I clearly remember a few of the soldiers talking to me about how in 2000, the Taliban had basically ended the growing of opium throughout Afghanistan. And then one of the first deals the United States made in that war was to work with the different overlords in order to build allies and protections throughout the regions of Afghanistan, which they did by guaranteeing that the regional overlords could go back to growing their opium crops again. And since then, the number of overdose deaths from prescription opioids has quadrupled in the United States. They've made hundreds of billions of dollars, and that's not even counting the people dying heroin. So maybe those two things have something in common. I mean, we invaded a country where the year before, the opium crop had been cut by 97%. And a few years later, more Americans died from overdosing on drugs than died during the entire Vietnam War. I think we need to refigure the death toll from the war in Afghanistan, because it is way higher. It's higher than a mother on heroin. Now, pretty much everyone agrees that we are in the middle of an opioid epidemic. And I think now we know why. It's because we agreed to make America the damn marketplace for the Afghani drug trade. It's the most obvious conspiracy yet. And it's not just the CIA that's behind it, like with the cocaine from Nicaragua in the 80s, because this time, all of damn Washington was in on it. In April 2016, at the height of the deadliest drug epidemic in United States history, Congress effectively stripped the DEA of its most potent weapon against the corrupt drug distribution companies. And then Obama signed it into law because he is also a scumbag who cared about profits more than people. He publicly decried that we need to do something to fight this opioid epidemic when he helped cause it. And if you think Republicans hate drugs more than they love, love profits, well then know this. The congressman who's responsible for that law, Republican Tom Marino, is on tap to become Trump's new drug czar. That's right, the next drug czar is on the take from the very people he's supposed to fight. McGregor Merriweather was less rigged than this shit. Trump wants to put the guy who just drove the drug dealer to the middle school in charge of fighting drug addiction. Tom Marino received $100,000 from the drug dealers to sponsor this bill. $100,000 is all it took for Marino to sign off on killing 200,000 people. So if you were wondering what Representative Tom Marino values American lives at, guess what? It's 50 cents per dead one. Now, too bad they can't come up with a drug that kills greed, because Washington could use that. Marino is an awful human who deserves to be tortured repeatedly. He's so disgusting, it makes me glad Dan Marino never won a damn Super Bowl. But hey, building seven. And there might have been a second gunman in Las Vegas. Let's keep paying attention to those conspiracies, America, because a gunman shooting 500 people in 10 minutes is only half the number shooting themselves with heroin every 10 minutes. It turns out Karl Marx was wrong, because the opiate of the masses is opium.